Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear many whispering. Terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him, say all my familiar friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived and we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who test the righteous, who see the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of evildoers. The word of the Lord. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. It is for you that I suffer taunts that shame has covered my face. To my own kin, I have become an outcast, a stranger to the children of my mother. Zeal for your house consumes me, and taunts against you fall on me. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. But I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of favor, in your great mercy, answer me, O God, with your salvation that never fails. Lord, answer, for your mercy is kind. In your great compassion, turn towards me. In your, your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God-seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his own in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the seas and everything that moves in them. In, in your, your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all men sinned. Sin indeed was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Spirit of Truth will bear witness to me, says the Lord, and you 
are also witnesses. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his apostles, Have no fear of people, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, utter in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim upon the housetops. And do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground without your father's will. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our first reading today, we see Jeremiah, the prophet, in a very difficult time in his life. You might remember that Jeremiah had not wanted the job of being a prophet in the first place. He felt that he was pushed into it by God. He has been called to speak words of warning that the people around him did not want to hear, in a context rather like our own in South Africa today, where people have had more than enough bad news. Let's just go back a few verses before the excerpt we have heard and listen to the words of Jeremiah, quoted from a more contemporary translation. Jeremiah starts his rant by saying, You pushed me into this, Lord, and I let you do it. You were too much for me, and now I am a public joke. They all poke fun at me, and all I get for my God warnings are insults and contempt. There goes old danger everywhere. Shut him up. He explains that he has tried to stop speaking out, to give up on being God's prophet, but he can't. The words are like a fire in my belly, a burning in my bones. He feels compelled to speak, but the cost is tremendous. He is insulted and humiliated, and his friends and family have distanced themselves from him, and he is alone. He is angry with God for calling him in this way and for giving him a mission that has resulted in all of the suffering. We catch in the reading the tail end of his angry vent to God, expressing all of his frustration and pain and his complaint. Maybe we felt like Jeremiah at times when we've experienced one thing after another going wrong in our lives, or when we feel all our efforts are misunderstood. It's especially hard when we come up against opposition for doing something or saying something that we feel God has asked us to do, or when our call involves huge suffering. It's interesting to notice that Jeremiah is engaging here with God in a prayer of lament, a prayer of lament like we find in many of the Psalms, has a number of different elements. Firstly, there is a complaint made against God. Then there is a call for help, and finally, an affirmation of trust and a call to praise God. And this is what Jeremiah does. He pours out his heart and his anger and frustration with God, and then makes an act of trust and faith in him. In this way of praying, Jeremiah shows us how to be both real and honest with God about our feelings, and at the same time to affirm a trust in the fact that the Lord is at my side and on my side. Sometimes when it's hard to trust and praise God, we can get there if we first allow ourselves to lay out all of our frustration and our pain as it is. We can hold both our angry feelings with God and the deeper sense of knowing that ultimately God has our back 
and there will come a time when things will be different. The Gospel reading from Matthew has a similar theme. It is an excerpt taken from a longer section about the difficulties of discipleship. Jesus warns the disciples of the hardships that they will experience as they preach, intimidation, rejection, suffering, and even death. He tells them not to be afraid of people who seek to harm, that God is protecting you at the core of who you are. Discipleship does not mean that we are protected from hardships, and sometimes standing up for our faith or its values seems to bring on hardship. Sometimes we see that in quite dramatic ways. Oscar Romero was assassinated while he was saying mass for speaking out for justice for the poor people of El Salvador. Whistleblowers and those who work for justice in our South African society often put their lives on the line, as we saw recently when gunmen assassinated Kriti Murray, a liquidator of assets acquired through corruption. An 84-year-old Jesuit, Stan Swami, who championed the rights of indigenous and marginalized people in East India, was arrested and died while he was awaiting bail. Fortunately, most of us will never have to face violence or death in standing up for the values of our faith. But faithful discipleship, nonetheless, may come at a cost, as it did for Jeremiah and for Jesus, and for countless people who have spoken truth to power or have ministered to others in hostile situations. For us too, sometimes standing up against racism or sexism or xenophobia and other evils in our society will not make us popular. We may face scorn or find ourselves being pushed away by family or friends or those we engage with on social media. Sometimes we struggle in the very ordinary situations of our lives. We may give our all at work, but find that our intentions are misinterpreted. We might experience a painful struggle in, in an important relationship after challenging the person we are concerned about to get the help that we can see that they need. In those kinds of moments, we can come to God and vent our frustration and our pain. God, who is never pushed away, by us telling God our experience just as it is. And still, we hear the promise that however dark it seems to be, we are not alone. I remember once in a very dark time in my own life when I was excluded from a ministry I had deeply invested myself in over many years. I was walking on the beach, pouring out my frustration and my pain to God. Suddenly, my eye caught the sun glistening on a small rock. I picked it up, and in that moment, I sensed God saying to me, Anne-Marie, I promise I'm looking after you. The gospel says every hair on your head has been counted. God knows us that intimately. Do you know how many hairs are on your head? I certainly don't, but God does. God knows everything about me. So God understands exactly what I am going through and its impact. Jesus uses another beautiful image in the gospel. Not one sparrow falls to the ground without your father knowing, and you are worth more than hundreds of sparrows. The message today is very clear. As followers of Christ, we will face hardships, sometimes small and sometimes very big. But if we are truly doing what we are doing out of love for God, in the end, our efforts will be vindicated. And while we wait, God is with us every step of the way. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word. And help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.